Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a very interesting equation. We have 5 to the power x minus 1 equals x squared minus 2x. This is a non-standard or transcendental equation. How do we solve it? We definitely need a non-standard method. Maybe graphically, we can go in and graph the left-hand side and the graph the right-hand side and then look at the intersection points, even though it may not always be very accurate. It's going to give us an approximate value, right? So you can go ahead and graph these functions separately and then check the intersection point. How many will there be? Hopefully you get to see. But here's what we're going to do instead. Add one to both sides. And then, ta-da! Hocus pocus, math and magic. The right-hand side is a perfect square. We're going to write it as such. Now, I need a special function. What is it called? Lambert's W. Okay, what is W? So W is a special function which acts on t to the t and gives us t as the output. So in other words, it's the inverse function for t times e to the t. And the reason I express this in terms of t instead of x is because our x is not x whatever that's supposed to mean. So this is a very mathematical function, thanks to Lambert. We're going to go ahead and get to this. But the million dollar question is, from this, how do we get to that? That's what I'm going to talk about. So let's get started. First of all, I'm going to start with this. And then my next step is going to be, and I need to make some um, assumptions here. I'm sorry about that but you can also pursue the other way. It's going to be very, very similar. I'm going to go ahead and square root both sides because when I do, I basically get rid of the square. This left-hand side is going to be the square root of 5 to the power x, which can be written as 5 to the power x divided by 2. Remember, square root means something to the power 1 half. And the right-hand side is going to be the square and square root are going to cancel out, but we have to use absolute value. But I'm just going to take values for which x is greater than 1. So I'm going to take this as x minus 1. Again, if you want to take it out as 1 minus x, the method is going to be very, very similar. It's even going to be a little easier because you don't have to uh, deal so much with negation. You'll see what I'm talking about in a little bit. Okay, so here's where we are. You're okay with that? And um, maybe you're questioning, like, so what, right? Okay, watch out because this is going to be really, really cool. Next step, I'm going to divide both sides by 2. And I'm doing it because my goal is to get to Lambert, which is this, okay? I want to get something like t to the t, even though we don't have that in the equation. But notice that dividing by 2 brings us closer because you can go ahead and separate this and write it as x over 2 minus 1 half. Now, notice that x over 2 and x over 2 minus 1 half are pretty close, right? Hmm, what can I do with that? First of all, I can go ahead and maybe do a little bit more division, right? How about dividing both sides by... 5 to the power 1 half. And again, you, you might be asking, like, why do we do that, right? So let me go ahead and separate the 1 half first. First of all, I'm going to go ahead and write it like this. I don't want to skip any steps. And now my goal is to turn this x over 2, this one, into x minus 1 over 2, which is x over 2 minus 1 half. So I need another exponential that uh, will subtract the exponent. And you can only do that by division. So you can go ahead and divide both sides by 5 to the power 1 half. And when you do that, what's going to happen, uh, the exponents will be subtracted. Take a look. This one and this one. You see what I'm talking about? That's going to give you x minus 1 divided by 2. So 1 half is going to be in the front. We're going to get times 5 to the power x over 2 minus 1 half, which is the same as x over 2 minus 1 half divided by 5 to the power 1 half. Okay, it looks messy, I agree, but it's going to get better. Don't worry about it. So we're going to clean it up. But first, notice that this is the square root of 5. So we can kind of take it out and write it as 1 over square root of 5. So it's going to look like this, 1 half times 5 to the power x over 2 minus 1 half. Again, just bringing it down equals 
and I can kind of write this part as 1 over root 5 multiplied by x over 2 minus 1 half. And I do need parentheses because 1 over root 5 will be distributed. Or maybe not, but we still need it. Now, we can go ahead and put this in a more meaningful form. Now, So this was my goal, to get this and that. So they are the same, which is really cool. And I'm going to go ahead and divide by that. But what about the 1 half? I'm going to put it on the other side. So multiply by 2, divide by this. So divide by this and multiply. I mean, it's still divide, but, you know, let me just write it as divide by 1 half. So divide by this, divide by that, and we'll get the following. 5 to the power, x over 2 minus 1 half stays the same. We divide it by this, which is x over 2 minus 1 half. You see how they get together? Equals, now I'm going to multiply both sides by 2. That'll give me 2 over root 5. Right? Make sense? Great. So let's go ahead and put this in a more meaningful form now. So... And also, one thing to keep in mind, this wasn't my intention, so let me go back a little bit. Let me back up. I don't think I want to do it this way. I actually want to bring this over this way. So I should probably change my arrows and kind of go like this. Okay. So here's what I want to do. I want to keep this here on the right-hand side. So I'm going to divide by this. And I'm going to multiply by it or divide by that. So it's going to look like this. Root 5 over 2 equals x over 2 minus 1 half divided by 5 to the power x over 2 minus 1 half. It's very important to keep the polynomial, I'm not talking about the exponential, but the other one piece, in the numerator. You'll see why that's important in a little bit. But let me go ahead and switch sides so I can write it like this. x over 2 minus 1 half divided by 5 to the power x over 2 minus 1 half. Notice that the exponent is the same as the numerator and write the root 5 over 2 on the right hand side. So far, so good, right? But we don't have E. What are we going to do? We'll fix it. Don't worry. After the step, because uh, right now I want to bring this 5 up. Why? Because remember our expression that we're going to be Lambert or we're going to W needs to be like this. T, E to the T. So this is going to turn into E to the T mathematically in a little bit. So I need to bring it up. To do that, we're just going to negate the exponent. So it's going to look like this. x over 2 minus 1 half is in the numerator, stays the same. Multiply by the reciprocal of this, so which is 5 to the power. What's going to happen to the exponent? You're going to negate and negate. Okay? Both. And that is equal to root 5 over 2. Awesome. What's next? Now, we're going to go ahead and... Eify this, okay? Eify means we're going to turn it into E because we do need E. Remember that? Euler's number because Euler is awesome. So to do that, we're going to use an identity. 5 is E to the power ln 5. Awesome. That's going to help us a lot. Let's use it. Now, I'm going to go ahead and replace 5 with that. X over 2 minus 1 half multiply by E to the power ln 5 to the power negative X over 2 plus 1 half. And then that's equal to root 5 over 2 again, right? Now, notice that these two aren't the same, but they're opposites. But don't worry, we can take care of that as well. Multiply both sides by negative 1, and boom, you got it. Easy, right? Now we have negative x over 2 plus 1 half multiplied by e to the power, ln 5 to the power. But I'm going to switch the exponents because they can be switched. And the reason behind that is... Uh, they're multiplied, so I can kind of write it like this, right? doesn't matter. Multiplication is commutative, and this is now a negative quantity. Don't forget that. Uh, there's a lot of things you need to keep track of, so be very careful with this. We're almost there. And now notice that my t is not complete. This is my t, but I don't have an ln5 here. Again, that's easy. That's an easy fix. Multiply both sides by ln5, okay? And then that gives you what you need. Exactly, right? That's what's awesome about all these steps. Because, yes, it's kind of painful. But no pain, no gain is my mantra. So here's where we are. Oh, don't forget to multiply by ln5 because we just did on the right hand side. I mean, left hand side. So we got to do it on both sides. Beautiful. Now, this is my t. And I have t e to the t. 
If I W that, it's going to give me T. Remember, W T to the T equals T. So if, if I apply W on both sides, because if you know that if two inputs are equal, then their arguments or outputs are also equal. In, in other words, X sub 1 equals X sub 2 implies F of X sub 1 equals F of X sub 2. And F is just any function including Lambert's W. So now we're going to get T from the left-hand side after applying W. And the right-hand side is just going to be W of, because we don't know what it is yet, but don't worry, we're going to fix it, okay, in a little bit. Great. Now, what do we have? We have, oh, and is there a minus sign in front of it? No, it's good. I think we just applied W and it should be good. Now, we need to solve for X, so we kind of need to know what this is going to turn into. Why don't we work on that? W of what is W of negative root 5 over 2 times ln 5. We also need to put it in the TE to the T form or CE to the C form, right? Because these are constants. How do we do that? First of all, notice that negative 1 half can be applied to 5, right? So we can kind of write it like this. Uh, root 5 multiply by negative 1 half ln 5. And I'll probably go ahead and apply this here. And if I do that, it's going to give me root 5 times ln 5 to the power negative 1 half. I have a feeling that there shouldn't be a negative sign there. Uh, but maybe uh, we're supposed to have that. Let me go double check my work because I don't want to make a mistake. I think this is good. Root 5 over 2. Uh, root 5 over 2. Yes, that's what I have. And ta -da, da da we brought it up. It's still root 5 over 2. And then we turn the 5 into ELN5. Yes. And then finally, yes, we multiply by negative 1 to fix this. And it should be good. Okay. I think it's good. Uh, it should probably work. Let me check. So, anyways. Now, this gives me root 5 times ln 1 over root 5. Okay, I think that can be fixed. Can that be fixed? Mm, it doesn't seem to match. Because I was hoping to get something like, maybe we, we can fix it. Oh, hold on. So, this gives me um, a negative sign somewhere. Uh, so, maybe we can do something like this. Okay, anyways. Let me do this. Uh, put a minus sign here and write this as ln root 5. So, I took the power negative 1 out. And now we have ln root 5, ln root 5, and then times, I'm going to write the root 5 as e to the power ln root 5. This gives me t to the t, but I don't know why there's an extra minus sign there. That's kind of weird, because it should not be there. Anyways, I'm probably missing something, but here's my point that uh, I needed, wanted to make. Eventually, when you set these equal to each other, then you should be able to get the value. But let me go ahead and talk about the second method, which should clear everything up because it's really, really uh, basic that there is another way to do it. Okay, here's how it goes. We have 5 to the power x equals x minus 1 to the second power. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and consider the graph of these two functions. It doesn't mean we're going to estimate it because I'm going to show you what that looks like. Basically, 5 to the power x is an increasing function as well as this one. But uh, this one is actually decreasing and then increasing. How is that graphed? We have the vertex at x equals 1. And for x equals 0, it's going to uh, intersect that one. So they're going to go through the same point. So our parabola is going to go down and then up like this. So on this interval, from negative infinity to 1, one of the functions is increasing, the other one is decreasing, so that can only intersect at a single point, and it's going to happen at x equals 0, because 5 to the power 0 is 1, and 0 minus 1 squared equals 1. That's the only point of intersection. Now, going back to the first method, why did this not work? I think... Uh, we should have taken the other solution here. So instead of x minus 1, if you go with 5 to the power x over 2 equals 1 minus x, you're going to realize that when you replace x with 0, yes, because from the taking the square root of on, on both sides, um, we introduced basically some, um, you know, 
some issues here. But if you replace x with 0, you're going to realize x equals 0 does not work here because that gives you a negative number, which was negated by squaring both sides. But here, this should work. If you take this and apply the same steps, you should get the same answer. Anyways, that, this was a, already a long video. I don't want to make it any longer. Hopefully, you'll get to practice that. But definitely, I made a mistake. But the answer is x equals 0, and that is the only solution. And... This brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.